Hallo, ich bin das Taxi. Good luck, Luis. How you going? You good? All right. <laughs> Put the seat belt on. I'm driving here the S hybrid car. Yeah. And I was told by Mercedes that the hybrid road cars invented basically the system you have on your Formula One car. So straight question today, how much slower would you be without that fantastic car system? The car system, we are very, very fortunate. It's very powerful. It's very, um, it's working very well for us. I think we have the strongest car system. I've been telling, telling people we don't have the best car at the moment. We have made a huge step forward, um, but at the moment our car system, uh, it makes up for the, the loss in downforce that we have. So Kurs gives us around four tenths, almost four tenths per lap, every lap. And, and it's a little bit, it's like three, in the race I think it's 3.5 tenths or something, and in qualifying it's four tenths. But um, it's, for us, if we didn't have it, we would be, we definitely wouldn't be competing for wins. How hard is it for you to use it in the right part of the circuit? Yeah, it's easy. It's so really you, easy. you work it out yourself when to use it you, or do you get... We do it in two, two different ways, that the teams simulate and find out which one, which positions is the best, theoretically, which is best, okay. where to press it, two, three, one, how many times to press it and how long. And then, um, and but first of all, I go out and I press it where I feel is comfortable. Okay. And then I use up the whole 100%, um, the 40 uh, kilojoules uh, in that lap. And then they'll tell me which one is best and they'll find out and then at the end they'll tell me which one and went. You always see how much is left of it yeah. per lap. You have two different settings. You have one that tells you the, how much is charged, yeah. how much percent, and you can get 160% uh, or something, but you can only use 100% um, in one lap. And then the, the other, other setting we'll have is literally not to 100%. So it starts at 100 and every time you press it, it gets less and less, it decreases. It's like this uh, on this car. It says 47%. Yeah. But when you pull, you know, when you start braking again, you'll start charging it, and then when you pull away, you will, you'll we'll lose it. That's the same thing for me. So last year you've been world champion. Last race, hard, difficult year, and you had everything you can get for being a world champion. And then you suddenly dropped into a huge hole yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. So how do you cope with this? Uh, you know, yeah, you've but been there before. But for me, I, I, I had. Um, did you have a difficult time? I had a very... Di I, this year has been the hardest time in my life. More hard than winning the championship, I guess. Um, just different. Emotionally, yeah, winning the championship, we know how to win races, but um, living your life and pre preparing yourself to win and then arriving and finishing last, it's demoralizing, it's, uh, it's so hard. And then you have the media talking things about you, then you have... Especially when Button, on the other hand, is yeah. successful suddenly. Yeah, especially as a driver, what you want to show the world is that you're the best and you can win races. Which you are, but the car is not. Yes. Yeah. And when and when you can't, and then when people start questioning how you how good you are, and people say, "Oh, this person must be better," it's frustrating that you can't react and fix it by going fast because you don't have the car. But did you did it bring you down mentally? A bit? Did you feel uncertain or...? I never felt uncertain about my ability, no. It was just, there was nothing I could do. Lots and lots and lots of sleepless nights, lots of... Um, thinking what you can improve. Thinking, lots of hard work with my engineers, lots of pushing you guys, when are you going to get this, when are you going to test that, when can we try this, lots and lots of pushing. And it's been a very tough season, but you know, the, the great thing for me was knowing that my team didn't, weren't going to give up. If they have given up, then we're just, why are we racing? I want to be a part of a team that always pushes, because for me, when I'm driving a car, whether it's good or bad, I'm always pushing. So I want the team to be the same uh, mentality. And for sure, if I was with a team that didn't have that mentality, then I would, I would I'd be in the wrong place. But I'd, I'm not in the wrong place. These guys kept pushing. And even when I had my doubts, they kept pushing and, and vice versa. Um, you know, and each weekend when they feel negative, I try to pull them up by saying, hey, 
we can do it. So Budapest was the turning point from my point of view, even before you could see the Germany was a turning point for us. Yeah. The car felt felt so much better. And there was one lap where I uh, I switched the radio on to say, okay, box this lap. And I forgot to turn the radio off. And I left the radio on, I was driving, I was driving, and I was so excited on the way in. Yeah. And I was, woohoo, you know, it feels amazing, you know. I was so excited. And the, my whole team heard me <laughs> shouting and screaming, and they recorded it and played it to my team back at the factory. Very good. But for me, it was embarrassing, but for the team, yeah. I think they were excited to see the reaction. So, so basically, you now you're back happy, everything works well, everybody's pushing in the right direction, everything yeah, is good. You know, the crazy thing is that I would think, you would think, I got pole position, which I'm very, very happy about, clearly. But because even though it's our first pole position this year, you would think that it'd just be ecstatic and everything. I still think it's not a perfect lap. Okay. And I still want to okay. do better. Yeah. And so, and so the, critical still, even though we've only... I don't need to tell you, this is the key to always improve yourself yeah. and get going and so yeah. on. Yeah. Is um, the car now easier to drive because of Heike suddenly is there with you? With mm -hmm. these aerodynamic changes and things? You know what it's like well, for us with, with the technology we have, looking at data is a huge plays a huge role so when I was teammates with Fernando I learned so much and I always was catching up because he would arrive at the the track he knew the track he knew how to get the best from the car I was always catching up catch up catch up catch up and sometimes I'd beat him in qualifying and other times I wouldn't and um, this is the same for Heike right now you know I'm, I arrive I've got the experience of that that track and, he's and he he looks at the data, catches up, catches up, and catches up, and he's very strong in qualifying. So here we are. I cannot do better. Goodbye. Thanks. We'll catch you later on. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Can you keep driving us back? It was a good track ta taxi driver. He was great, and it was a good. It was a real pleasure and honor for me to be sat alongside uh, a multiple world champion. He was a fantastic driver. So you know, huge respect for him and. Good to spend some time with him. Das erste Mal ist das Auto toll, ein Hybridauto. Also das ist ja auch meine Zukunft, sage ich jetzt einmal. Man muss ja was tun, dass die Autos ökonomisch fahren. Und der Luis ist ein klasser Kerl. Es ist relativ einfach, mit ihm zu reden. Ich habe überhaupt kein Problem, keine Berührungsängste in irgendeiner Art und Weise. War sehr sympathisch und normal für mich. Oh.